talk to you. Smell vision on that thing. Smell vision. Smell vision. <laughs> Josh, you know what we're doing today? No. What are we doing? Uh, we're gonna trade places. I don't. I don't really want to date Haley. <laughs> You're getting to do the work today, and I'm gonna learn how to use your gimbal. I was gonna say Dota with a camera on it, but whatever. I'll go get this shit, and we'll uh, get started. What the fuck are you looking at? Alright guys, so we're gonna get to disassembly of what it takes to put the diff lock in. So, if you don't know, and you lock your truck, if you were to lock your rear diff in, in two wheel drive, when you go over, it's like 25 or 27 mile per hour, it will unlock. Uh, so this is allowing it to stay locked throughout the RPM mile per hour range so it'll be always locked in once it is we'll show you how that show you how to check if it's locked in besides doing a burnout so first i'm just going to pop this little sill out oh nice on. super easy there and you have no no uh, come in here i don't know if we can there's like a little pull latch thing. I don't know how well they can see it. Grab that. And then I'm going to move some of this weather strip in. Just because it makes it a little easier. Alright, Josh. So I have. I'm gonna pull this carpet pull this carpet back too. So you have full range over what you're doing here. You need something to like weigh that down. Whatever. So now you can get to what you need to get to. Alright guys, so we're about to start this, but before we start it, I just wanted to show you that if you ever go to buy an SP product that either we did a video on or we didn't. Um, if you need the instructions like previously to doing the job to kind of give you an idea of what you may need or what you're getting into and if we don't have a video on it yet, you can come over here to spmotorsport.com. See if my phone picks it up pretty good. The camera, go up in the top, go down to instructions. And you have your list of instructions. Now for this, this will be your diff lock instructions that we need. Then you go down to the bottom, print it off at your local printer. Uh, generally, they're sent with the kits, but if you, like I said, if you want to do this before, you kind of get your head wrapped around what you're getting into. So once it comes in, you kind of have an idea of what you're getting into before you just jump right into it. That might help you a little bit more. I don't know, but just a little idea. So we get Josh started. I printed them out just so you guys can see. Right here, so the whole shebang. It's pretty, pretty easy. And then here's like a little super simple wiring diagram. What needs to happen? So there you go. So I guess I'm gonna try and film you doing this, but there's not a lot of room in here. Yeah. So we're gonna see how that all goes. Uh, but we're gonna get some tools. Uh, pretty much you're gonna need a good wire crimper. Um, and we use on these, they are heat shrink butt connectors, like so. Mm -hmm. So you can use a lighter if you want, but getting a lighter up under the dash kind of is a little sketchy. So you can do it, just be aware of what you're doing. Um, but it is nice because you can see once they're done right here, it's a sealed unit. So yeah it's your turn to get the work in here josh all right guys so whenever you get all this stuff out carpet pulled back this panel is going to be up underneath here there's two clips one right here one right here get that out of there all right guys so to remove these two nuts for the tccm we're going to be using a quarter inch ratchet with a semi deep socket, 10 mil. Uh, semi deep is going to allow you to get this one all the way up in here. You might be able to get it with a regular open end. Um, the stubby will be a little bit too short, like a regular 
socket will be a little bit too short because of the stud sticking up and in deep you'll probably be hitting up here so definitely would recommend getting one of these get this stuff off what are you talking about? the stubby socket oh and then how the other ones are either too long or too short the the, the semi deep work yeah perfect and you don't need to take this one all the way off you can just loosen it up so that way it slides out because it's slotted so got that then what you want to do there's two tabs on your connectors let's see if I can do this with one hand right here and right here push them down pull them out move on to your next step there we go all right everyone you get your connector the black one you find the bottom of the connector which is this side that doesn't have the locking mechanism on it the brown and violet wire is the second one in from the left if you're looking at it this way so this would be the left right second one in brown and violet you get the wire sheathing cut back cut the wire install the black wire with the connector already on it from the supplied harness from SPE onto the harness side of the wire. So this side, not the connector side, the harness side. I'll get that installed just because of it's kind of hard to work in here with the camera on. And I'll show you what it's like after I get it installed. Got that installed. As you can see, I got the black wire connected on the harness side. Electrical taped off this open wire so that way it's protected. Next step, come over here to your brown connector. Find the white and green wire, which is this one right here. I don't know if you can see it. Right here, white and green. What you're gonna do with that is you're gonna take your white wire off the supplied unit from SPE. Take this and your T-tap that's supplied and tap this in to the white and green wire right down here, or up, yeah, down here on the bottom of the connector. T-tap that in there. That's the next step. I'll get to it, show you guys what it looks like after. All right, guys, we got the white wire from the unit supply from SP. T-tapped into the white and green wire on the brown connector. Black connector connected to the black wire on harness side. The other side from the connector, electrical taped up. Next step is to take the fuse tap off the unit and connect it down here. Let's see if I can get some better light. This bottom left hand fuse, number 37, you're gonna pull that out, put the T-tap or the fuse tap in there, put both fuses back in the top of it, and you're good to go. Get that done show you guys what it looks like as you can see both fuses are in fuse taps installed it's all good to go next i recommend putting the sheathing back on the wires up here um once you get that done you need to mount this back in there install the box put your connectors back in you'll be good to go
right guys so that's what it looks like once it's all back installed got the fuse tap wire running right down here behind this wiring harness and these connectors We've got your fuse box and your relay up here connectors back connected in nuts are tight once this is all done and reinstalled carpet and everything and we'll get back to showing you how to make sure that this is operational and is functioning properly and uh see you in a bit all right josh wow it's weird being behind a camera isn't it yeah so how we're being how, in front of it yeah is it yeah. all right so how was how was your install dude first Pretty time easy other than the fact that it's just a pain in the ass working underneath the dash other than that it wasn't it's, it's wasn't kind of hard. hard it took about like 30 35 minutes but i mean that's your first go around ever yeah how many times should we do the instructions before you like jumped on in probably twice yeah i read them to like two or three times uh just to make sure i got the correct wire on the correct connector thing all right, right. well we'll see if you did or not yeah we'll see if i did it right <laughs> all right i think it's kind of hard to mess up but we'll see all right well we'll uh pull this poppy out and uh well actually, i'll show them you can pull it out and i'll show them how to tell you know how to lock it in and everything right pull it out yeah just pull it out and then uh i'll show them easily how to uh tell when it's locked in by the rear wheel all right all right guys so basically how i'm going to show you how to tell if it's locked and everything's working properly once he gets it out here is once it's locked in if you go to back up or go forward and you make a sharp turn you're going to hear one word or one wheel sorry one wheel like almost chirp on the pavement and that'll be because that the rear end is locked and the inside and outside tire are moving at the same speed so that it essentially needs to rotate the same amount. So I'll see if I can grasp that on camera for you. Yep, see? I don't know if you can tell how it's slipping a little bit. See how it slips a little? And you can kind of see in certain spots it'll be like a little more dark. Right there, right there. And that's just because they go forward. Actually, I'll have to come over to the other side here. See? Yeah, see how that happens? The diff is locked now. Show them how to lock and unlock. Press it in. Do you think you gotta close your door? Alright, so press it in. Should be unlocked. Yeah. And then that'll come up. It says check locking differential. You hit OK. Yeah. And then you're in. You're in. I showed them how. And you can feel it shaking a little bit in here. You can, you can see. see the tire mark. Yeah. What's up, Josh? Why are we why are we back down? What are we what are we doing here? Well, the T tap didn't break the casing on the white and green wire. So the diff lock was fully engaged all the time and it wasn't engaging and disengaging with the switch whenever you pull it in and out. Mm -hmm. So we took that T tap off, stripped the wire back a little bit, like the casing on the wire with the razor blade, put the T tap back on, and then I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. But you put the camera well, they'll, they'll be able to hear the the dip, left dip yeah. locking in the rear. I hit a few times. Just go. Okay, so hopefully they can hear that on camera where it's clunking, the diff's locking. You can also, in real, I don't know if the camera will be able to pick it up, but you can hear the relay click as well. Yeah. So whenever you know if you're testing it like have key on engine off power and then just pull it out you'll be able to hear the relay click and the little clunk in the rear end and then push it back in and you'll be able to hear it whenever yeah it engages and disengages well all right so how about the little project of today how, how'd it go josh went really good it was uh it was pretty easy to install just working up under the dash like around the camera kind of sucked a little bit but uh other than that, it was really easy. Um, the tap 
didn't break the casing on the white and green wire like we just uh, mentioned before. Um, so the diff lock was engaged all the time. The uh, wire, we just shaved the casing off of it a little bit to get the tap to work, tested it out, worked fine. Um, overall, it was really easy. Probably take you about 20, 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, depending on your ability level. Shouldn't really take much longer than that. Um, Let's go do a burnout. Yeah. You want to do, do a burnout? Well, you can. I'll film oh, it. Okay. That's fine, yeah, you know. Stop beating on it. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Put the link in the description if you want to buy anything. I don't know how close this is to my face. I'm not used to sitting on the side of the camera. Does he know what he's doing? Yeah, so like, comment, subscribe. Hit the link if you want to buy anything. Any of the products you see on the truck, it'll take you right to SP's website. And uh, yeah, tell Josh he doesn't know how to drive a truck in the comments. <laughs>